Having a loved one enter treatment or entering treatment has to be one of the most difficult decisions that a, a client or patient makes, as well as their family. And so they're at a very vulnerable state. Um, and even if you're just going to the cardiologist, um, like it was mentioned before, there's a lot of nuances with insurances as to what's going to be covered. And there's a lot of, you're, you're scared. You walk in, you're not sure if they're going to cover you. Um, and so just imagine that multiplied when you're going into a residential setting, your family's upset at you, and there's this big financial burden. And so I think that ensuring that there's a solid uh, uh, admissions process um, that determines, is, is this client clinically appropriate? Can we help this client? And that there's a conversation with the client and the support system about what the insurance will cover, what it will not cover, and being clear. Um, I think there's a lot of fear when clients walk into treatment. If we have those conversations, they're going to leave. They're going to AMA, ATA. Um, but I think that having those conversations up front with the client and the family helps them make a decision, a, an informed decision that eventually impacts outcomes. Because if your client and their family are informed about the process, they know what to expect with costs and insurance, then they're more willing to stay in treatment. And long term, you know, your you're getting reimbursed for services that are rendered and you're not losing that, the cost of the client acquisition um, and you're not losing you know, you, what you thought you would lose for, lose for not admitting that client. Um, so in the long term, outcomes are better and, and clients remain in treatment and make progress when they're informed and we're transparent about the business transaction that goes along with entering treatment.